Hello again, Year 12. So this is part two of our lesson on pronouns today. And what I would like you to do just to begin with is to try to fill out this table in front. So it's a pronouns revision table. And what you have is you have a list across the top of the type of pronoun. And all I would like you to do is to consider what the pronoun would be if it were first, second or third person and how it would change if it were singular or plural. So I just want you to try and fill those out for me, please. And just pause this clip as you do that. OK, hopefully you managed to get the following down. Uh, if not, please make sure you add that to the table there. What we're going to be doing now, guys, is we're going to be considering the impact of pronouns okay so we're going to be identifying in a couple of extracts from di two different types of text we're going to be identifying exactly where the pronouns are what type of pronouns they are that way we are actually um, looking at here and then thinking about what the impact on the audience or reader would be so we're going to start by looking at a fictional character that you should be very familiar with uh, and that is Arthur Berlin. I just took a little couple of bits of his speech here and put it on the slide. So Arthur Berlin in Act 1, he says, It's one of the happiest nights of my life. Your engagement to Sheila means a tremendous lot to me. There's a fair chance that I might find myself onto the next honours list. Okay. All I would like you to do, first of all, as we've got down the side here, highlight and label the pronouns used in the speech. I then want you to kind of pinpoint and write, jot down any notes as to why these pronouns are being used by Priestley and think about the impact on the audience there. So I would just like you to pause this clip again and give that a go. Okay, hopefully you managed to get some ideas down there and I think some really key pronouns to be to be zooming in on and discussing with this yeah well it's first of all the use of personal pronouns it's the first person and um, per, uh, personal pronouns that we have here so of course we have Mr Berlin talking about how it means a trem tremendous lot to me and he also says a fair chance that I might find myself. So we've got the personal pronouns me and I there when Arthur Berlin is kind of referring to himself. And of course, I think what the the importance of these use of pronouns, these personal pronouns in this extract and throughout Act One is it kind of constructs this character who seems to be very self-absorbed. It's constantly demand be the centre of attention. You know, any event that happens in the play, he's always concerned with how it impacts him um, rather than kind of anyone else as well. And of course, when we think about Priestley's purpose, this really just help kind of convey that purpose and achieve that purpose. Through these personal pronouns, he's building a really kind of unattractive character with unattractive, selfish qualities that he wants to encourage an audience to challenge because, of course, post-war audience, um, when they kind of hear the kind of things that he's saying, are hopefully going to challenge the capitalistic views that they deem is dangerous to society. So it kind of coincides with the message he's trying to convey there. But also, we have the possessive pronouns, the first person possessive pronoun, my, uh, when he talks about the engagement between Gerald and Sheila. So this is a night for, you would kind of assume, for Sheila and Gerald because he'd been engaged, but he sees it as belonging to him. Uh, you know, this idea that it's actually more of a business deal than it is a celebration of an engagement, further emphasising the fact that he is so self-absorbed and arrogant as well and quite ignorant to everything else that's going on around him. We also have the possessive second person possessive pronoun, um, your, when he talks to Gerald. So he is kind of acknowledging that it's Gerald's engagement, but 
again, it's this idea that this engagement, this night belongs to the men and what that might tell us about women and their position in society at the time, which kind of also coincides with the messages that Priestley is trying to convey. So hopefully you got those kind of ideas down. We're going to look at a slightly different text now. It is a speech. It's a speech by Emma Watson uh, about the he for she moment. So I would just like you to pause this clip again, please, and do the follow the same sort of thing as you did with um, the Arthur Boleyn extract. So highlight and label the pronouns for me. Kind of consider why they've been used, for what purpose, and the impact that they would have on the intended audience as well. So, I'm just going to pause this for a moment and jot your ideas down. Okay, hopefully, this time round, you'll have identified first of all that we have personal pronouns being used in a very much in a very different way. So for a completely different purpose here. So, if you believe in equality we have there and then we have I spoke of earlier I applaud you so she uses personal pronoun you to directly address the audience which we would expect which is a common convention of speech which we've looked at of course um, a couple of weeks ago and it's this idea of making the audience feel involved in the discussion that that they are having on feminism and the Heath She movement. And of course, as well, you can talk about this personal pronoun I, the repetition of that personal pronoun. It's the fact that Emma Watson very clearly wants to make sure that the audience identify her herself and the Im her image with the Heath for She movement. She wants that she wants to help the cause and she wants to be involved with them in this kind of change and also on top of it as well you could probably mention the fact that she knows she's a well-known figure and that by kind of attaching herself and her image to the movement she's helping them as well um, and perhaps kind of help it become well more well known as well um okay we also have the personal pronoun kind of collective one here we which you may have ideas down about how it, it builds a sense of community this idea of bringing people together working together and um, which hopefully is going to encourage and motivate an audience further and then finally we also have the interrogative pronoun of if not me who okay so got who there so really kind of leaving them with a reflective point there so they can kind of go in and think about how they are going to make a difference so that is how in our two texts arthur Boleyn text and emma watson speech personal pronouns have been used okay guys so that's absolutely great so this lesson so we've kind of talked through all the different kinds of pronouns identifying them why they're used, the impact, etc. So next lesson, we're going to be moving on and we're going to be looking at the other function words um, and sort of identifying those as well and kind of following a similar pattern there. So thank you very much for listening, guys.